Jenna, it's a great pleasure to be back home in my hometown. Let's start with uh, listening to the words of a famous philosopher. To alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. All right. So, <laughs> now I like this so much because if you just replaced the word alcohol, by artificial intelligence. It would still be funny, wouldn't it? Because it's such a double-edged sword. And that's exactly the theme we're on here tonight. How can we get the upside of these te powerful technologies without the downside? So, first of all, we can all agree that AI is getting more powerful. Just think about it. Not long ago, robots couldn't walk. Now, they can do backflips. Not long ago, we didn't have self-driving cars. Now, we have self-flying rockets that can land themselves with AI. Not long ago, we didn't have AI that could do proper face recognition. Now, AI can not only do face recognition, but it can simulate Jamie's face saying things he never said. Not long ago, AI couldn't beat us at the Asian board game of Go. Raise your hand if you've ever played this. Pretty tough, yeah? Then Google crushed not just human gamers at Go and chess, but more interestingly, it crushed human AI researchers, who, like myself, who'd spent decades handcrafting algorithms, and by just playing against itself for 24 hours, it blew all of that away and made it obsolete. Not long ago, and so on, you can make it a long, long, long list, AI is improving in power. Now, the good news is it can solve problems. For example, AI can now save lives, right? Many of the over a million lives wasted on the Earth's highways every year and roads, I think will soon be savable by autonomous vehicles. As well as even more lives that can be saved just from eliminating silly mistakes in healthcare, according to a recent study. And still more, by having AI-powered diagnosis. We now have machines doing better diagnosis than humans for prostate cancer, lung cancer, and various eye diseases. Not long ago, an ultrasound machine was big and clunky and expensive. Now you can get one that fits in your pocket, connects to your phone, and is affordable, democratizing healthcare around the world. Not long ago, AI couldn't solve the famous protein folding problem in biology, but now, AI won the protein folding competition last year and blew away all the human competition by taking in input, just a genetic sequence, and predicting what the shape would be of the protein it folded into, which can really revolutionize drug discovery and drug development. Here you see the great agreement between the simulation, which is cheap, and doing it the old way and measuring it with X-ray crystallography, which is slow and expensive. So those are just examples, a few of them, of huge benefits we can get from solving problems. But of course, just as in, in Homer Simpson's little quip there, AI can also cause new problems. For example, it can manipulate people, like Cambridge Analytica did very successfully. They thought it was it fireworks assassinate first, people. but it was a drone bomb. This assassination, assassination attempt in uh, Venezuela, Venezuela failed, but this one you see here yes, unfortunately yes, succeeded. And it can also read a lot of economic havoc. Re recently, drones took out half of Saudi Arabia's oil production, and some idiot decided to drop a bomb on his ex-girlfriend's house with a drone. And <laughs> it can also cost a lot of money if you deploy systems that you don't fully understand, like Knight Capital put in this clever trading system, which was losing $10 million per minute until someone was like, no, 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 turn this thing off, 44 minutes later. And uh, sometimes it's more than money, sometimes it's lives. This was a very simple system that Boeing put in their 737 MAX, but they hadn't understood it as well as they should have, and people died. It can aid very much people who maliciously want to hack things. If you have a Yahoo account that was hacked, because so were all the other three billion Yahoo accounts, and uh, it helps hackers. You see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. 
So this opens countless new possibilities for scams. They're much more efficient than if you get an email from some Nigerian prince, right? So how can we get the upside and not the downside? This is the key theme that we're going to continue discussing after this. And the basic message I have is, first of all, we need to draw a clear line between acceptable and unacceptable uses of technology. Now, you, I know what many of you are thinking. Ah, that's um, impossible. Max is just an idealistic dreamer. It's never going to work. But actually, it is possible. Our friends in biology have already shown how to do it. They very successfully managed to rally biologists to persuade the world's politicians that we should draw a line and use biology for um, saving people, helping people, rather than new ways of killing them with biological weapons. And biologists didn't just sit around and wait for politicians who knew less about biology than they did to make laws and rules. No, they got ahead of the game, met in Asilomar, California, and drew their own line. And as a result of this, we love biotech today. We associate it with good things, not with new ways of murdering people, etc. Everybody won because they drew a line. Inspired by this, AI researchers, we organized a conference in exactly the same place, the Silicon California, for leading AI researchers from industry and academia to discuss where they wanted to draw the line. It produced this list of 23 principles, which were signed by over a thousand AI researchers from around the world. They have been endorsed by the state of California and helped inspire recent legislation and rules from guidelines from the European Union and others. So we're on the right track there. And uh, in summary, I believe firmly that we have to feel both the excitement and the fear to really get this right. Einstein said, make things as simple as possible, but no simpler. We have to have both in mind. We have to have a clear positive vision of the upside and also be mindful of the downside so that we can make AI systems that don't overpower us, but that empower us. And I want to end, since we are here in Sweden, by talking about Sweden conquering the world. Shh, don't tell anyone else what we're up to here, those of you who are visiting Sweden. We've tried twice. First time, we tried it this way, with Viking swords and stuff. I cannot say I'm very proud of that. But we did it another time, much more successfully. In 1945, we're like here, oh shit, we Europeans really blew it again, starting another world war. Maybe we could do something different this time. And we formulated this ridiculously ambitious, positive vision of a future where technology was used not just to make ever more powerful weapons, but to create a society where technology helped everybody. What about public health care for everyone? What about free university education for everyone? What about free pensions? And of course, I'm sure there were a lot of curmudgeons who were like, dude, you're such a loser idealist. Go hug a tree. It's never going to work. But the vision was so compelling. And Swedes are not just idealistic, but very practical folk also, that we actually made it work. And this idea conquered the world. Right? Every single country in Europe copied it. Every single industrialized nation in the world, except the US, has also copied it now. And I would like to see us do this again. It's so pathetic watching political debates these days and how unambitious they are. I watched all the Trump-Clinton debates before the last election. AI came up zero times. Here in Europe, likewise. Let's think, formulate welfare 3.0. And let's think, what can we do if we can grow world GDP by a huge factor with AI? How can we create a truly inspiring future where we all get dramatically better off, not just for the next election cycle in one country, but for all countries, so China wins, the US wins, Europe wins, and why not for billions of years? Why not help life spread into the universe? Let's be really ambitious, just like we were in 1945, because the more clear vision we have for something awesome, the more likely we are to all get it. Thank you. Thank you.